again, YouTube! This is Dr. Kendo, and we're back with another Scribblenauts Unlimited creation. Yes, that's the name of this game. It's Scribblenauts Unlimited. You don't have to ask anymore. There, boom! Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start off with a mecha as the source object. Today, we are creating Sundrop and maybe a few more. Yeah, keep on watching. Hit that subscribe button. Fez, F-E-Z. That's what we're starting off with. You do want to make sure that this mecha body is shrunk down, you know? You can see all the little green grids for where you can place, like, the head, the arms, and the legs and all that, that's important. We'll be editing and placing things all around, but you just want to be sure that like that all gets placed back where it's supposed to be with the body. Now here in the color pattern library on that fourth page, you can see we did that red and white kind of candy cane like pattern. We're going to be using that for a lot of Sundrop's clothes right now. This T-Rex, it's essentially the shin, you could call it, you know, but it's right above the foot of the T-Rex. This is going to start off the pants right out of here. And let's go with elf. You do want the holiday elves. You could use probably the male or female elf. You just want the most curly little toe. And by the way, we should say, we're, there's gonna be a lot of details that we're not gonna be able to include. So like, this is not gonna be just like some 100% spinning image of Sundrop. You know, this is if you dropped it into Scribblenauts Unlimited. So that's very, I would say, important. But you know, I think most of the time people get it. The letter I. So all you have to do is type in I right there. Just went down after the tube top. We're just sort of getting where the pants connect to the torso and all that. But Go ahead and place that down. The clothes button, of course. Capsule was for the neck, and we're actually going to be using that again right here for the arms. And that is capsule the shape, so not, not the device. Sticky hand we're coming up with next. You can just use these color pattern library textures once again. Earlier we had a sea moth. That's for all the frilliness, but now we have a sea goat. These will be like the ribbons and whatnot around its wrists. So here we go. Placing all that down. So remember, again, where the green grids are. Make sure that you're placing your objects in things, all these little stamps that you're using, and you do have a limit. That's actually why we haven't created the head yet. Scribblenauts Unlimited, yes, it has a limit. The game is a little bit limited. So yeah, just place them where you need to place them. My friends, what you're seeing on screen right here is the properties editor, and so this is where I like to read background information and fun facts about the characters that we create in this series. Let's do this. The daycare attendant, as the fandom page calls it, or quote-unquote son, as FNAF security breaches dialogue text labels him, but ultimately Sundrop is the attendant in the superstar daycare at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. When the lights are deactivated, he becomes Moon. But as Sun, basically, don't go near the light switch. Do not touch the light switch. Don't flip that switch! It seems there is an eclipse form of the character that has some differences in appearance, but today we're just doing the base Sun Drop and Moon Drop as you're familiar. Also, just a note, for extracurricular fun, feel free to check out my creation of Sun Drop in Metopia. In both Scribblenauts Unlimited, this game, and in Metopia, this is definitely a a complex character to create, which I would say is good, even if a bit challenging at certain design points, but hey, I really do hope that you like it. We're gonna start off with the wheel right now. We're gonna be making that head separately, so like I said, this is a loophole for what I alluded to before. With the stamp space, this snowball, for example, is one stamp. You have a limit to how many you can place down. Ivory is gonna be coming up after that. This is gonna be especially, I think, complex. So like the body, we could mostly get how we wanted it to be, but the head, there's definitely gonna need to be a few sacrifices just to fit within the design principles and all the parameters of Scribblenauts Unlimited. And so you're going to see it manifest here on screen. We had a two ball. That's one cheek. We're going to have another one over on the other side after a few more design things. There's Sometimes this is how you do it. You don't do like both the left one and the right one. For instance, this cheek right here, we just put down now after the nose. Sometimes you want to be placing these other things first and keep moving them and adjusting them as you're placing on more stamps, especially with a complex character like this. And so let's go with blind snake. Ladies and gentlemen, is it actually blind? I believe it is. Either way, you're just taking the tail, paint it all the way with this yellow-ish paint. The good thing about this is like you can see we had to do two tails, right, for the smile, but even sun drop and the moon drop form, the teeth do have like a clear split, you know, where the head is divided just straight down the middle, it seems like. So with the sun frills and the sun beams, that was dunce cap, do that many, many times like this. Jellyfish, there's like a black tentacle part that uh, is just, it looks like a line. The stamp limit was reached right here, so you can see what that alert looks like. You know, it says, hey, you gotta delete a few more if you wanna place on some new ones. Just for short, I'm gonna call this Sunhead, because we're not using the PC version or anything. I'm just typing with the stylus on the Wii U. This game is available on Wii U and PC. There is the Mega Pack version for Switch and other more modern consoles and things. Not as good as this one, I swear to you. But ladies and gentlemen, go into the Properties Editor when you do make the head and the body separately. Go to the Equipment tab, fill in this circle that says can be worn on the face like glasses. It's almost near the bottom. Make sure that that's filled in, because then what we're gonna do is we 
you'd put this head like an object as if it were glasses. You just kind of give it to the body object right there. And then it mostly goes where you need it to go. You may need to just move around things on the body. Oh, okay. So look at this. We have a we have this boy right now beating the crap out of the sun drop. And so what happens? You see that green emotion flag right there? That's coming up because I did have a script that he would follow children. I wanted that for a specific purpose to actually follow the kid around and make sure he doesn't turn off the light switch, for example. But we're going to have to turn that script off. So here we go. Now let's see what it looks like with the script off. We've got this boy. It's like Gregory, right? Maybe <laughs> that's going to be the script. So sun drop going nuts. Maybe you could make your sun drop one friendly, though, and not actually destroy anybody like the little boy. If you want it to be like the game or whatever, then you could create the moon and that'll obviously be a little bit different. So we are actually going to need this golf glove. Go ahead and type that in. I'm going to show you why you need this in a little bit, but make sure you do this next step if you're creating the moon as well. Click on that trash bag up there. You saw I just zoomed in on it. It's in the top right. That gives you both gloves. You know, one's looking one way. One's got the other perspective where the palms facing up or the palms facing down. So yeah, you want this one palm facing down just like that. And I'm going to zoom in once again. Make sure that you have this, okay? It's got to be in your left side panel of stamps and what not to use. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. You can actually copy your sun drop creation right now and just make some changes to that. So there are going to need to be a few more stamps that we don't have space for essentially. So this is why we're doing some different design principles. For instance, the golf glove. But on the ninth page, use this yellow and white pattern right here. That'll be for these frillies because they've got a slightly different color pattern and whatnot. Then on the fourth page, there's this starry night. It's not going to look like it has as many stars, of course, as the typical moon drop, but that's because we don't have enough stamp space to put on more stars. So here we go. This is that golf glove I was talking about. We took this one because we had it earlier in our left side panel of stamps and things that we can use. Recently used stamps. Yeah, that's why you have to make sure and do that step that I showed before with the golf glove. Because when you just type in golf glove, you're going to see what happens coming up here soon. I'm going to make sure to put this in the right spot. And you do want it to be a little bit big. Sometimes it might look a little bit bigger in Scribble Notes Unlimited than you intend to because you can only go certain increments of size when you're like increasing the size of it. This is what happens when you type in golf glove though, is it comes up with this one where the palm is facing up towards us. And so we don't want that for both hands, right? That's why we did the step earlier. So here it is. Let's go ahead and move that now where we need it to go. So ladies and gentlemen, you can also see that the part where the wrist would be essentially, we did paint that that purpley maroonish color. And that's for the ribbons that are around this character for moon drop. But notice all the different, just the color differences in general, right? For instance, the frills right there up by the neck. And so here I'm going to go ahead and we'll type in tube top, which we also did use for part of the body or where the pants are essentially. But this time we're going to make it so that our Fez body pieces right now, they can have that dividing line of blue because of course moon drop, when it changes to that, it's going to have the blue and the whitish gray. Those are the colors on the body, right? So let's keep on doing this. I don't think I mentioned the little bells for the shoes. Those That's ball, B-A-L-L. -L. So for sun and moon, that's what you're going to do. Again, we couldn't include like the little moon designs on there because that would use a stamp piece, which we did not have space for, unfortunately. So again, sometimes in Scribble Knots Unlimited, if you're really trying to get every single last design aspect, there's going to usually be some something you have to sacrifice, usually, in a lot of cases at least. Hula Dancer, let's go ahead, type that in, and then you're going to go with the female Hula Dancer's back arm piece right now. We can make that be the other blue on the body. So ladies and gentlemen, looking good. Moon drop. I'll do a few differences right now. What it sounds like, uh, we can make it a little bit more just an imp right here. It's going to sound like more kind of creature-esque. And the other scripting is pretty basic. I mean, we can go into the behavior tab, and this time, now that he's a moon, he's going to be angry and everything like that. So let's make it destroy children. This sounds extremely dark. Going to be demonetized. Nope. Nope. All right. So you can also take the sun's head right here and notice all these changes we're going to make to it. Get that hula dancer back arm piece once again, the same one that we used last time. P-E-A. That spells P, of course. Take that. That's going to be for the eyes. Both the little, like, bright pupil right there as well as just the darker red around that. Dory. It's a fish. No, not like finding Dory. It's Dory. Bottom fin piece for that. We're starting off the little nightcap and then we can end it off with exercise ball. That's supposed to be the bell that's on the end of the nightcap here. That's for our moon head. Again, just for short, I'm calling it moon head. You can, if you want to, type out the whole thing. Moon drop head. Whatever you need to do. But I figured we should see a little bit more. We only saw just a tiny bit of our sun drop creation here and we'll get our moon drop on the field as well. Look at this. Adventure Phantom Foxy. Yes, from FNAF World. One of my favorites of FNAF ever. Oh my god. Look at this head swap, ladies and gentlemen. We swapped their heads. Adventure Phantom Foxy made mincemeat of the sun drop, man. That was crazy. Moon drop up in this piece.
piece now. Here, let's see. Uh, we're we're going to get it involved with... I mean, this is already dark as it is. So here, it's False Gregory. Boom. Going to be smacking this thing. Um, Moondrop, you disgusting, man. Totally destroying a little boy. How could you? But you see, that's the script, right? We had it set to destroy it. Boy, right there, dude. Jeez. Murderous. I mean, I guess that's really... This is what a large part of FNAF is about. Okay, you understand? Here is the test of time. Who is better, the moon or the sun, my friends? Uh, Okay, it's the moon. <laughs> Sun just maybe doesn't have that killer instinct. That was a fun game back in the days, by the way. Yes, I am that old. Even older. Here's a head swap. Look at this. We got the sun and the moon. Boom. The sun head actually goes a little bit deeper on the moon's body right here. But hey, that's what you'd look like if you swap them out. It doesn't look right, though. The colors are all wrong. But hey, whatever. So check it out, ladies and gentlemen. We do actually have Vanny in a different episode. But this is. We got the band right there, the glam rocks. And then y'all's request. A lot of you guys asked for sun and moon. There they are, but please feel free to click an end screen on screen to see another one. And so I'll catch you over there, and thanks for viewing.